started and start a series because I think it's been appropriate. We just finished a series on faith, and I, I, I know that what the Lord has done for, for me, and several years ago, back in the 90s, when I was just heard about these kind of things, and God has taken me back to that to now fine-tune some of the things that I looked at at that time for the first and become more uh, sharp in so that I can actually do it. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, I believe that God is moving in a powerful way in my life. I don't know. I, I see some tremendous changes happening because of the things that I'm learning and my time spent with God. And when we spend time with God, it, everything works together. But today we're going to look at and start for the next several weeks, Lord willing, learning how to speak correctly. So I want you to put your hand on your heart right now because everything that originates comes from there. So, Father God, we thank you, Lord, for changing our heart and our mind and our life as we learn not only to walk by faith, Lord God, Father, but learn how to speak the way you have taught. Help us to speak the things that you have so that we can flow in that power and that anointing. We thank you, Father, for it, Lord God, because we are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, and no weapon formed against us shall prosper and we just speak life now, Lord God, over this church. We speak life over every person. We speak life over the businesses. We speak life over the families. We speak life over these individuals. We speak life over our finances. We speak life over our understanding of your word. We just speak life, not death, Lord. And we thank you, Father, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Because greater are you, Lord, inside of us. Now we ask for the inside to be worn on the outside. We thank you for that now in Jesus' precious name. And all the redeemed of God said, amen. So I want to begin a study here today on words, the power of words on how we are to say things on a consistent basis. This is not something that is a quick fix. Words are the most powerful things that God has given us. Words can actually shape your entire world, or they can destroy, destroy your world. The Bible teaches us in the book of, uh, <clears throat> turn this on, in the book of Proverbs chapter 21, here we go, how many like, thank God I'm here today, amen, hallelujah, I'm half here, I'm getting better in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. I want you to see something here. The primary thing we do with our tongue is speak. How many are hearing the words that are coming out of my mouth right now? Hallelujah. You're hearing words that have been uttered out of my mouth, and they're coming forth, and you hear it. And that's what the, one of the major functions of our tongue, except for eating as well. Hallelujah, which we're all going to do after service, I hope. Hallelujah. Now, the Bible teaches us that, that our tongue has the power of death and life. Now, listen, God doesn't have that power on us. Jesus doesn't have that power. The devil doesn't have that power. You have that power. You and your tongue have the power of life and death in your life. You do. That's what the Word of God says. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, your tongue. It didn't say Jesus. It didn't say the devil. It didn't say Father God. It didn't say Holy Spirit. It didn't say anyone else. It's your tongue. How serious a matter this is. Now, with it, we can speak life over our life or death over our life. Christianity actually is a, 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 a confession. You started with a confession, Christ, and all the way through your life, you'll be speaking confessions. And these confessions will control your life, whether you like it or not. They'll control you because you'll go in the direction of that. True Christianity, then, is a confession. It's not just positive thinking, which is good. I remember Norman Vincent Peale and visiting up there in New York when I was finishing my master's degree and in, uh, in, Long, in uh, New York City, one of the great persons, proponents of positive thinking. But it's not positive thinking alone. 
It's understanding the word of God and, a, and speaking it in a positive manner. Speaking it with as though it's so. Hallelujah. It's not just thinking it. Actually, the word confession. Everybody say confession. Confession is an important word in the, in the Bible. It comes from a Greek word, and that Greek word is homologio. Now, what homologio is, is a compound word. And what that means is, is two words put together to make one word. And here's what that means. It comes from the word homu, which means together, and logos, which means word. Or together words, or words spoken together, or in agreement. And so when we look at the word of God, it's actually this. When we confess, it means this. We are saying and agreeing with the same thing that God is saying about our situation in our life. We just are agreeing with it. We are just saying, that's how you got saved. How many here are saved here today? If you actually recall what you did, if you can remember, some of you have been raised in this all your life, but you still had to make a, a confession of this at some time. What you did is you confessed or agreed with the fact that the Bible says you are a sinner. You agreed with that. And then you confessed Jesus as Lord. You agreed with the fact that Jesus needed to become your Lord. In so doing, you connected the transaction and became that. God wants you to understand that the power of your words is when you come into agreement with what God says about your situation in your life. And when you do, your life changes. Your life will actually go in that direction. Here's what it says and how it says it in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. Because if you confess or agree with, come into agreement with God, with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, about who he is, what he did, and you believe in your heart, not just your head, that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved for, listen, here's the principle, for with the heart, men believe, it has to come from your heart, with all your heart, not just your head, it's not a head knowledge, it's not a, uh, uh, just a, a, a thing that you think about, well, with the, with the heart, men believe unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. The fact is here, confession is made unto anything. You can confess, and it'll come. Now, I'm not just talking about a one-time occurrence. These are things that you have to say on a repeated basis for sometimes it could take years, but you will become that. And I'll show you about how that is. And how your life is molded by your words. How it's shaped by your words. We have so many people in the church that are speaking junk. That are speaking things that are not biblical. That are speaking out of their flesh. That are speaking out of their emotion. That are speaking the situation. The Bible teaches us in Mark 11 verse 23. It says, Who shall ever say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe those things which you say shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. And what we need to understand is God is telling us that people in the world sometimes are speaking more what they have than what they want. And they're speaking the situation more than the, than the answer. They're speaking the problem more than the answer of God. They're speaking doubt more than God's word. And God will tell you right now, it tells us in the scripture that life and death are in the power of your tongue. And you need to understand that. And I want to us to start here today to be seriously look at how you and I can start changing the way we talk. Now, this is not just going to happen overnight. How many are being a Christian for several years here? Let me see your hands. It's going to take all your life. And the more you do it, the better you get at it. This is not a five-year plan, a ten-year plan Retire at 60 from Jesus. This is something you have to do, and you have to work on it, because, and some people more than others. Now, I got a lot of work on my own self, and I'm not perfect either. Hallelujah. Just ask your spouse, and they'll tell you the truth. Amen. One of the biggest problems in your life is the way you talk. Your mouth. We have it in the church. We, we even in the church sometimes will say, well, it's raining. Well, nobody's going to come today. 
Well, the flu is going around. I guess I'll catch it. I believe I'll get it. They're actually believing for it. Can you believe that? You know, the devil has so foddered or twisted the tongue that we happen to believe it. And whenever you hear the other kind of talk, people think you're arrogant and people think you're crazy. When you're actually talking God talk, when you're actually talking the way God taught you to talk, wants you to talk. Because it's so foreign. Again, God's word is not from, he from earth, it's from heaven. So those words are totally antithesis, the opposite of what we are. Hallelujah. For example, again, look at this. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Listen to the latter part. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You're going to eat whatever your words are. You will. You will. Now, some of you might look at me and say, words, words, that has no power, really. Just look at everything that's done. Everything that's done. And it's controlled by that. If nobody spoke anything... Matter of fact, the best way to kill a thought is not speak it. Did you get that? The best way to kill a thought is not speak it. It dies premature. It also says this in Proverbs 6, verse 2. You are snared, means trapped. Notice what it says. By the words of somebody else's mouth. by the words of the devil's mouth, by the words of the pastor. Thank God. You are snared or trapped by the words of your mouth, the way you talk, the way you are. You are taken. You know when you're taken? Ever, anybody ever get taken? Man, ain't this God, they took me, man. They took me for all I had. They just, go, they just took me. They talked me, and I believed it. But you are taken by the words of your mouth. That, so it's important to understand the power of this and understand how we need to start talking because, we, again, if we learn to talk like Jesus talked, who taught Adam and Eve? God did. And when he sinned, another element came in, death, a death cycle. And it actually took Adam and Eve several hundred years to learn how to talk that death until they died. How else would they be able to control the elements? God said, I'll give you dominion. Well, you can understand when they're planting a garden and a little squirrel come into it and say, shoo, man. But what would happen if an elephant come trampling through that? He had authority with words. And the words he had had power. And understand that you have power in your words. Now, this is a new concept for some of you. Some of it, you need to learn it again and practice it again because it's the truth of God's word. Your tongue not only affects yourself, but others around you. It sets an atmosphere. It creates an atmosphere. You ever see somebody that was negative? The first reaction is for you to repel and go away. You ever see somebody that was positive and, and charismatic and, and, and just had the presence of God because they spoke the way God did? Even though they're crazy, you would like to be near them. Like Joshua. Hallelujah. You just like to be around Joshua because he is crazy for the Lord. Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. So you need to pay attention and seek God in this, your tongue might be very small, but it gives directions to your whole life, your whole life, okay? So we need to start taking the steps. What steps? The steps with the help of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, help me to learn how to speak right, to speak the way you want, to speak your word. Well, you think, you think you're like God, Pastor John. No, no, but we should act like him. That's called godly. Godly, the, the prefix at the end, or the, uh, the suffix at the end, means you're godlike. You're like God. We're supposed to act like God. How many want to act like God? I'm mean, here in Jesus' name. Let me see your hands if you truly mean that. Let me see your hands. 
Some people have a problem with that. Act like God. I can't act like God. I mean, how, how sacrilegious. See how much we've been trained by the world? We think that's bad to say. But it's not bad to say. Hallelujah. We need to line our life up with the word of God, what it says about us and about our situation. And then we can start going in that direction because you're going to go in the direction of your tongue. The Bible says this in the book of James chapter 3, verse 2, for we all stumble in many things. Now, James is telling us there, we're all goofballs. How many would agree to that sometime, at least? So, okay. Look to your neighbor and say, he's talking about you. Hallelujah. And guess what? He is. I know I'm a goofball sometimes. But at least I know it. At least I know it. The worst kind of person is the person that doesn't know it and thinks they're not. They're called pain in the neck. <clears throat> Amen. For we all stumble in many things. Now notice what this says. If anyone does not stumble in word, the word there is spoken word, in speaking words, he is a perfect man able also to bridle. That bridle is like a, a horse. You kind of bridle it and, it, and because of that, you're able to control that animal. Okay? You are able to come under control. The whole body, you can actually do that. Now, the word perfect here in this is really unique. It's a word, teleos, and it, what it means, it's, it's complete. It means it's full of age. And this is so important for the church to hear because that's what God wants us to become. He wants us to become mature. He wants us to become those kind of individuals that are faultless, that are, that are able to speak like he would, that are a full age. It's time, in other words, to grow up and stop talking baby talk and stop talking gaga from the enemy and stop talking like him and stop talking like your flesh. Hallelujah. So we need to understand a person who is who has his words under control, is a mature believer. This is where we're supposed to aim for. And now I need to do this. I need to aim towards maturity where I watch. The Bible even says if you think evil, put your hand over your mouth. Watch the words that come out of your mouth. Because if you don't, you won't be able to control your life very much, and it'll be the same. Listen. Your life is where it is because of your mouth. <clears throat> How many would agree and say amen to that? Hallelujah. Matter of fact, a person who develops this is able to control his life and make it better. Now, I'm not any better than anybody, but I know God has blessed me. And I'll tell you why. Because of the word of God. And because the words that are coming out of my mouth that are from him. We're supposed to speak his stuff. Not just our stuff, but his stuff. Hmm. Here's a biblical fact. Write this down. Whichever way your tongue goes, you will go. Whichever, whichever way your tongue goes, you'll go. And the Bible teaches this. This is so important. James chapter 3, verses 3 through 5. Here's the brother of the Lord Jesus Christ. Actually, the, phys the, the physical brother and spiritual brother of Jesus. That would have been interesting. Verse 3 says, We put bits in the mouth of horses to make them obey us. And we have control over everything they do. Everything. The same thing is true for ships. They are very big. Matter of fact... We need to honor our, our uh, World War II vets here today. Hallelujah. We thank God for Lord and Lila over there. This is December 7th. <laughs> 73 years, is it? 73 years ago. In Jesus' name, at Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor. So we honor them in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The same thing is true with ships. They are very big and are driven, driven by strong winds, yet by 
using small rudders, pilots steer ships wherever they want them to go. In the same way, listen to what it says, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it can accomplish nearly anything or destroy it. A large forest can be set on fire by a little flame. Now, I want you to see something here. It has two analogies. It has two ways to relate this. A small bit can be placed into the horse's mouth and control that animal. I kind of looked it up because I really don't know much about horses. But the average horse in a mature state weighs anywhere from 1,000 to 2,400 pounds. That's about several times more than me, thank God. Hallelujah. <laughs> and you too. I mean, can you imagine that? If you weigh 200 pounds, that, that's five times in one, at the most or more. I mean, that's five times stronger than you. And, it's, and what you need to understand, this little bit in the mouth, if that can change the direction of that horse, just think what your tongue can do when it learns how to talk right in your life, in the church, in your family, in your work, in everything you do. You can control it all. It'll go in the direction that you say. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Then it talks about a ship. Regardless of the size of the ship, a small ship, a little boat, or a big boat, a big ship, a freight liner. You know how it's steered? By a rudder. Wherever it wants to go, they just turn that. Now, here's what you need to understand. There is someone behind the reins of the horse steering it. There is someone behind the, the, the helm of the ship steering it. You know who that person is in your case? You. Not God. You are. You're steering your own ship. You're steering your own life. And it's going, listen guys, over here, it's going in the direction of your tongue. Some of you over here need to change. Okay? Need to change the way you're talking because the world can influence you. And the world, if you start speaking what the world says, you'll have what the world says. But if you start speaking what God says, you'll start having what God says. Because life and death are in the power of your tongue, and you've got to choose. What are you going to say? What are you going to do? Hallelujah. How am I going to do it? And I want you to understand that we release power out of our mouth. We can, we can pronounce curses, or we can pronounce blessings over our life and over others. I'll never forget... I'll talk to you just about a story. There was a great man of God down the street here. I used to go to his church before we started New Covenant. And there was a time where God was leading us out to start this church. And I'll never forget, I, I went to his office and I said, Pastor so-and-so, <clears throat> I'm going to be leaving. And uh, God wants me to uh, start a church. And I said, it will be none of your people. A group has a a, a, a called me to maybe start a Bible study. And you know what he said to me? He said, you'll never have over 50 people in your church. Okay? Don't anybody say who it is because he's a good man. For 20 years, that was resident within my heart. 20 years. 20 years later, and upon his retirement... I had a knock at my door over here, and so-and-so, Pastor so-and-so, was there. <laughs> and Pastor so-and-so came in, and he said, Brother John, I've done a great misjustice to you. Twenty years ago, I said something over your life that I shouldn't have said. And I'm here today to take those words back. Would you let me pray for you? I said, most certainly. So I got down on my knees like this because I'm, I respect men of God. Did you hear me? Even, because, even when a man of God says something wrong, you should respect the man of God. And I got down on my knees, and he said, I release you from the words I spoke. 
And all of a sudden, that thing that was in me for 20 years, because every time I would look out, I would be afraid to look out the window of my office, counting the cars. That's one of the reasons why I have a black screen in my office now. And I'll never forget when that curse was broken. Boom! God came in it. And I want you to understand, the words you speak can either bless or curse. They're powerful. Some of you have been cursed in your life by your own parents, by other friends, by your own siblings. Huh. Life and death are in the power of your tongue. How many want a good life? Then you better start learning how to speak. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's why we need to understand how to speak God's word and God's thoughts. Listen, your thoughts become words, so be careful with the words that come out of your mouth. Listen to this. Be attentive to your thoughts, for your thoughts become your words. Be attentive to your words, because your words become your actions. Be attentive to your actions, because your actions become your habits. Be attentive to your habits, because your habits become your character. Be attentive to your character, for your character becomes your destiny. And you need to learn how to change that. I have some good news today. You can change your destiny here today. You're not bound to hell. You're bound for heaven. You're bound for the blessings of God. You're bound for the blessed. God is on your side. God is on the move. And God wants you to get up, stand up, and believe that he can do the impossible in your life. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Praise the Lord. If I can up here speak, speak the way I am, you can sit down here and praise him more with all your heart. I said you can praise him with all your heart. Hallelujah. Don't just sit there, fight. Fight. I never learn, I never forget. I was watching this program about this one, one robot. I'm into sci-fi real heavy. And they were testing, it was Flash. Anybody watch Flash? And they said, how will we know the strengths of this person? He's the fastest person in the world. He says we have to continually test the limits. That's how you know your strengths. Continually test it. So when you're under the gun and you have the devil come against you with colds and problems and situations, what are you going to do? Are you going to test the spirit of God and see that greater is he that's inside of you than he that's in this world? Are you going to succumb to the enemy and say, oh, my God, uh, this happened to me. It must not have worked. I'll just tell you right now, God does work, and God is true. And you need to try that. Come on now, church. I want you to understand, I got some good news. It's time to change your destiny. <laughs> Here's how you do it. You can take a promise from God's word. You can believe it, confess it consistently, not just for five months, but from now on, forever, forever. That's God talk. And you act on it from now on. You stand firm on it by faith, and then you wait and you stand there until it's manifested in your life. Then you go on to the next project, and you keep on going, and you don't stop. You keep on going. And you keep on fighting, and you keep on getting better, and you keep on getting stronger, and you don't know what's going to happen, but you know God's with you. Hallelujah. It's time to take a stand. I'm almost over. Isn't that great? I'm going to preach short today. Five, six. Man, you're slow. <laughs> Amen. It's time to take your dominion over the words of your mouth in line with the word of God. Hallelujah. If you have spoken wrong words, how many have spoken wrong words over their life? Let me see. Honest. I have. I got to watch every morning when I wake up and I look in the mirror, I got to really shut my mouth. How many know what I'm talking about? Ooh, you. Ooh, ooh. You. <laughs> 
This is how you need to look at it. You handsome person, you. I love you to pieces. <laughs> it's time to take authority over those spoken, wrong spoken words. Some of you have curses on you. You'll never be anything good. You're going to be just like your daddy. He's a drunk. You're just going to be like your mama. She was a whore. You're going to be like that other person. They never mattered to anything. You're just going to be like that other person. They got sick and they died. You're going to be less like that. And the devil, you have a choice. You can break those curses today. You can break those curses. We're going to teach you how to talk. We're going to teach you how to talk so your life this time next year will be 100% better. 100%. You'll look back. Mark my word, not mine. God's. Mark God's word. This time next year, you start practicing this, and you start developing it, and don't stop. Don't stop. By this time next year, you'll see a 100% turnaround. A 100%. You should shout about that because you're on your journey to success. You're on your way to a, a greater destiny. You're on your great, way to a greater height. I see this church at 500 already. And beyond that, I see it all happening already. I see the Bible college. I see the new sanctuary. I've been there already. I've touched it. I've smelled it. I've walked through it. I know it's true. Hallelujah. It's just not in the physical yet. But we need to bind some words up. Look what it says. I tell you the truth. How many can believe him when he says that? How many can believe it when Jesus says, I tell you the truth? How many can believe that? Raise your hand if you believe in Jesus. It's time to start believing Jesus and stop believing your church or denomination or anybody else. I believe, I'll tell you the truth. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And that means this, whatever you bind, whatever you hold down, when under you bring under your authority, it'll be bound. It'll be bound. Change the way you talk for the good. It is a, it's a constant endeavor and undertaking. So don't give up when you mess up. You will. You will. But you'll get better at it. Just shut your mouth when you do. And say, Lord God, forgive me. I, re I renounce those words. You know, everybody have here has a problem with their mouth. Come on. And I do too. And I need to renounce those things that are negative. And I need to change the way I am. And what you've got to do to do that is get in prayer. Get in the presence of God. Get in the word of God on a daily basis. Because you can't just do it once a week here like this. Thank God you're here. But if that's all you got, it's not going to do you very well. Don't give up. It's time to take an official announcement over your life and make you stand. Job 22, 28 says this, and you shall also decree or declare a thing and it shall be established unto you and the light shall shine upon your ways. A decree is this. Listen to what a decree is. It's an official order issued by a legal authority. And a, a, an official order issued by a legal authority. You know who that is? You. You have authority. I have authority? I certainly do, and you do too. Who gave me this authority? Who gave you that authority? Jesus gave us that authority. I give you power to cast out devils. I give you power to heal the sick. I gave you power. I gave you authority to do all these works, and greater works that you do. You have authority now to do something. You have authority to state, I can change my world. I can change my family. It doesn't have to be the way it is. Aren't you tired of the way it is? Let me see your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm about done. Literally. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. It's time to confess. It's time to confess what God says. I'm going to show you what I mean, and I want you to pronounce, say this with me. Stand up all around here. Come on up, guys. Thank God. Hallelujah. I'm going to let you out early today. How many will love me more if I let you out early today? 
Okay, I'll go on longer. How many will love me long, a lot, really more? This is so powerful. You've heard it before. It's time to hear it again. It's time to hear it again. Hallelujah. I want you to say this as loud as you can. I am. Come on. I am what the Bible says I am. Stop. That means you're righteous. That means you have the blessings of God. That means you have authority. Next one. Say it loud. I You have power. You have the Holy Ghost. You have the gifts of God. You have all of that at your disposal. Say it again. Number three. You can walk in the Spirit. You can pray in the Spirit. You can cast out devils. You can do all these things. Number four, say it real loud. You know where you are? Do you know where you are? Most people never know where they are as a Christian. Where you are spiritually is seated together in heavenly places. Far above all principalities and powers and all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt me. And here's what we need to understand. We're not fighting the devil from a position of equality. We're fighting the devil from a position of authority. And guess what? We overcome every time. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Say it real loud one more time. I am what the Bible says I am. I have what the Bible says I have. I can do what the Bible says I can do. I am positioned where the Bible says in Christ. Give him glory all over the